Woo! Direction cosine matrices, yes! All right, so let's say, oh, these are awesome. These are really useful, awesome. If you learn them, you're gonna be a dynamics wizard. Okay, so let's say we have a coordinate basis cap capital E1, E2, E3, okay? So just like this, and E3 is coming out of the page, all right? That's what, uh, if you see this symbol, like this, that means out of the page. It's, it's, think of it as like an arrow coming towards you. That's the point. And then if you see a symbol like this with an X, think of that as like the tail end of the arrow going away from you. And that means it's going into the page, right? So E3 is coming out of the page. So we have our coordinate basis. Now let's overlay another coordinate basis. We're going to call it E1, E2, E3, and it's going to be green. And we're going to overlay that over our... Uh, uh, our red basis rotated by some angle theta. Okay, so both of these are orthonormal unit basis bases, and uh, green has just been rotated by some angle theta. Now, how can we write this green coordinate system, this green basis, in terms of the red basis? Okay, well, we can do some trig, some, some very basic trig. So say we have, uh, we take sine of this angle here. So sine of theta, what is that going to be? That's going to be opposite, what is it, so tower so opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite y over hypotenuse. And since this is a, uh, a unit vector, it has length 1. So we put 1 in the denominator. So this tells us y equals sine theta. This distance here is sine theta. Now what about the cosine of this angle, cosine of theta? Um, so ka, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So adjacent is this, this gray x term, so o, uh, x over hypotenuse, which we just said was 1, 1. So this tells us that x equals cosine of theta. Uh, this is just saying the, uh, the denominator is equal to one because the magnitude of a unit vector is one. That's, that's what this was saying. Uh, so therefore, we can write E1, this E1 right here, this is equal to, well, what did we do? We went, you know, X, this gray X in the E1 direction, the red E1 direction, and we just said that that was cosine theta. So we went cosine theta in the E1 direction, and then we went, so we went x in this direction, and then we went the gray y, we went that distance in the E2 direction. We went that distance up, which was the E2 direction. So the y we said was sine theta, so we went sine theta in the E2 direction, and did we go anywhere at all in the E3 direction out of the page? No, we stayed within the plane of the page, so we went zero, distance in the E3. So this is E1, E1 represented in our red basis. Okay, we can do the same thing for E2. Okay, this, this here is the exact same thing I have written up here. It's just now we're going to be dealing with this E2 uh, vector. So how do we uh, get to E2? Well, we go the distance of, th this is a new y and a new x. These are new gray x and y terms, okay? So forget what we did with e1. We go y in the e2 direction, and then we go in the negative, we go in the negative e1 direction. We go in the y and then the negative e1 direction by x. So what is y in this case? Well, if we take cosine of this right triangle, and here's a right angle, it's adjacent, which is y, <coughs> over hypotenuse, which is a 1 because it's a unit vector. So cosine equals y over 1. So our y is equal to cosine theta in this case. What is x equal to? x is equal to sine uh, sine of theta. And remember, sine is uh, opposite, which is x, over hypotenuse, which is still 1. So x is equal to sine theta. So if we put that all together, again, uh, we get e2, e2, is equal to, well, what did we do? We went in the negative e1 direction by x. 
So, and we said X was sine theta. So negative sine theta in the E1. And then we went up by Y in the E2 direction. So we went cosine theta in the E2 direction. And again, we stayed in the plane. So we didn't go anywhere in the E3 direction. So that just stays zero. So E2 defined in our red basis is negative sine theta E1 plus cosine theta E2 plus zero E3. Okay, finally, last one. We have to define this E3, our green E3. So there is no change in the E3 direction, right? And we can see that E3, the green E3 is equal to the red E3. So we went zero in the E1 direction. We went zero in the E2 direction. And it, we went one in the E3 direction, right? Because E3 is a, is a, has a length of one. We went one in the E3 direction. E3 is equal to capital E3. So here's our E3. Now, putting it all together, we end up, and in matrix form, we end up with this. We end up with E1 equals cosine theta, capital E1, plus sine of theta, capital E2, plus zero in the E3. E2, which we have written right here, and you can follow along a little better here, is equal to negative sine theta in the E1, cosine theta in the E2, zero in the E3. And then E3 was zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. This matrix here is called the fundamental three rotation matrix. Moving on, let's do it. We're gonna do the exact same thing again. The exact same thing we did up here with these like gray X's and Y's, we're gonna do it again. But this time, our rotation, our theta that we rotate about, is going to be done about the two, the two axis. So you can see now, pointing to the right is E3, pointing up is E1, and out of the page now is E2. We are rotating about E2. We are rotating about E2 by angle theta. But we're doing the exact same thing. Okay, so we're going to define... Our, let's start with E1 this time. So we're going to start with E1, and we're going to define it in our red basis. So we have our blue X and our blue Y, and we can see that X is equal to sine theta, and Y is equal to cosine theta. So to get to E1, we go in the negative E3 direction by sine theta, by sine theta, and then we go in the positive E1 direction by cosine theta. And similarly, uh, if we're looking now at E3, we go gray X <laughs> length in the E3 direction. And then we go gray Y in the E1 direction. Okay, so in this case, we go cosine theta in the E1 direction. I mean, sorry, excuse me, cosine theta in the E3 direction, in the E3 direction. And then we go sine theta in the Y direction of E1. So putting that together, putting all of this together, we get that E1 is equal to cosine theta E1 plus zero E2 minus sine theta E3. Remember, we went minus E3 plus E1. Now E2, uh, same thing as above, E2 in the red basis is equal to E2 in the green basis. So 0, E1, 1 in the E2, and 0 in the E3. And then finally, uh, for E3, we went uh, cosine theta in the E3 direction, cosine theta in the E3 direction, and then we went uh, sine theta in the E1 direction, sine theta, and we didn't go anywhere in the E2 direction, zero. This is called the fundamental two rotation matrix, right? Because we rotated about the second axis. We rotate about E2. Fundamental two rotation matrix. 
And finally, uh, we're going to talk about the one axis. Uh, what if we rotate about the one axis? Again, the exact same thing we're doing, okay? But this time we're rotating about E1. We're rotating about E1 um, by theta. So E2 points to the right, E3 points up, and again, we do the exact same thing. So for E3, I'm going to go a little quicker through this, this one because it's the same thing. To get to E3, we go negative blue X in the E2 direction, and then we go positive blue Y in the E3 direction, and then X and Y are defined right here. To define E2, we go positive gray X in the E2 direction, and then we go positive EY in the E3 direction, where gray X and Y are defined right here. There is no change in the E1 direction, right? E1 is equal to, our red E1 is equal to our green E1. They both point out of the page, and they don't change after our rotation. So if we write that, then we'll get the fundamental, if we write it out in the matrix form, we'll get what is called the fundamental one rotation matrix. And these are our DCMs, our direction cosine matrices. So if we were to do a rotation, you know, about the one axis, we would use this one. If we do a rotation about the two axis, we use this one. And if we do a rotation about the three axis, we use this one. What if your basis undergoes multiple rotations, right? So say we're going from the red basis again to the green basis. You need to perform the following two rotations to get there. We first do a rotation of theta about E3. Okay, so we rotate about E3. And then we have to do, we rotate by an angle of phi about our new E1, our E1 prime direction. And I'm, I have it written out a little better down below. So let's just get to that. So this is the result of our first rotation. So if we rotate by theta about E3, about E3, so this is our, our starting, our starting uh, basis, and now we're going to this orange basis. Our orange basis is where we end up after doing our rotation about E3, right here. So it's, it's here's E1 now, here's E2, and here's E3. Now, to get to the green, the final uh, basis we want to get to, you can see that we need to rotate about the E1 direction, this E1 prime direction, which will bring the E3 down to here and the E2 up to here. Uh, just a side note, all of these are unit basis vectors and they should be drawn to the same length. I just drew it this way for clarity. Um, so after we rotate by phi about our new, uh, one axis, E1, we, uh, we get to our green, our green final vector or green, green final basis that we wanted to get to. So again, I'm just going to reiterate. First, we did a rotation about the three, and then we did a rotation about the one, the new one. And that got us to our, uh, final basis from our red to our green. These rotations are commonly called Euler angles. Um, there's actually 12 Euler angle sequences, but they've commonly kind of, uh, any rotate, any sequence of rotations are usually just called Euler angles. Uh, so to go from E1, E2, E3 in the red basis to E1, E2, E3 in the green basis, we have to multiply DCMs. We have to multiply direction cosine matrices. The product of a DCM is a DCM. And a special thing you have to do when you're dealing with these Euler angles is you multiply in the reverse order of our rotations that we had to perform. Again, I'm just going to say it one more time. I know I've beaten a dead horse here, but first we rotated about the three axis. First we rotate about the three axis by theta, and then we rotated about the one axis by phi. Remember that. Because when we go here and we start multiplying them, you'll see this was our first rotation, the three rotation by theta, and then our second rotation, 
was the ro one rotation by phi. Here is where we're going. Here is where you put the basis of where we were. So this is where we were. We were going from the red basis to the green basis. To do that, we had to first rotate by around about the three rotation by theta, and then we had to rotate by phi, right? So you see how it's reverse order. This is our first rotation. This is our second rotation. But you, you have to set the matrices up this way or else it doesn't work. So we plug in. Uh, so our two rotation, uh, sorry, excuse me. Our fundamental one rotation matrix here and we just plug in phi. That's how we defined it up above. And then we plug in our three rotation matrix, our fundamental three rotation matrix, like so, with theta. And then we do our multiplication. So we do our row by column, and then our row by column, row by column, blah, 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 blah. And we end up with this. This is the rotation matrix that will take you from, uh, from our red basis to the green basis, right? So in our basis, E1 is equal to cosine theta, E1 sine theta, E2 plus zero in the E3 direction. And uh, same for the rest of them. Just some things to note in case you, uh, I don't think I said it, but for the one rotation, the top left is a one, and then everything else is a zero in that. Uh, in our two rotation, uh, our 2-2 two, two position in the matrix is 1, and then everything uh, adjacent to it is 0. Same thing for the 3. Kind of kills these rows. Um, you can see that we have cosines on this diagonal and sines on this diagonal with the negative here. And it's the same for the 3 rotation, cosines here, sines here, with the negative here. However, on the two rotation, it's different. We have cosines on the diagonal, sines also on the diagonal, but this time the negative is in the top right sign. Before it was in the bottom left, and now for the two rotation, it's in the top right. So it's just a pattern to keep in mind. And uh, that's it. Uh, we'll, we'll do a lot of practice with a lot of examples, um, but just remember, you multiply them in the reverse order of the rotations that you perform. Very important. This is where we were. This is where we're going. Okay. That's all I want to say for this.